we've got our test boat uh, called T6. Very important part of the programme. This test boat has to be under 12 metres long, LEQ 12 under the protocol, and this allows us to sail and experiment various concepts that we need to understand in order to design the, the race boat RB3, which we'll be racing in uh, 2024. This boat is built for four crew. On the big boat we have eight, so we have four guys who control the boat and four cyclists or grinders who provide energy. It has been a really big year for Ineos Britannia. We've taken on the merge of this relationship with Mercedes F1. The next six months is very much focused on P6 and the data we get out of that boat. We have a lot of things to tick off technically. We've got some new wings coming online, some new hull shapes to look at, and they'll all feed forward into the design of the race boat. Coming from an F1 background, this is an opportunity to apply the cycling world and the top level engineering of the F1 world. Aerodynamically, we want the guys to be as invisible as possible on the yacht. We want them to be not sticking out into the external airflow. From a safety point of view, we want the guys to be able to exit in the event of an emergency. In the event that a cycler is passed out, we want to be able to ensure that they can be rescued. It looks like we've got two fairly good options there, haven't we? Because I think you're right, 15 seconds, you can drop in, click. The other two guys are ready to just pull out. <laughs> on this America's Cup boat, the cycles are there to basically power everything above the waterline, so we are the engines. Big differences between being a grinder and being a cycler, firstly, is the training environment. Come on, come on, come on. keep your eyes open, mate, keep your eyes open. <laughs> being a grinder, you're spending up to 17 hours a week on the grinding machine in the gym, which can be a pretty grim existence, to be honest. Ooh. We do most of our training now outdoors, which is epic. Here in Majorca, it's perfect for it because it's great roads, weather's generally good, or it's a perfect place to come for a training camp. We've had reasonable load cycling for the last kind of year, 18 months. We're gradually turning ourselves from grinders into cyclers. Now we've got to the point that we can come on these camps and it's epic to be out riding with the Grenadiers boys and see how hard they push in the mountains and that really gives you a boost and makes you push the extra little bit in training. First off, just great guys. Love the team atmosphere and getting stuck in and pretty handy on the bike when they stay on it. They pretty much follow their own little group of themselves and then we integrate and see them out on the roads and kind of set off together, but generally they've been doing the same courses as us. Cyclers, the way that they ride in the bike is pretty impressive. They're a lot bigger than what we are. I don't think they like the climbing so much as what, as what we do. They ride with us a little bit, we see them out on the road. When we're doing like the sprint work and they're doing it with us, they just smash it. The relationship with Ineos Sport as a wider organisation, and specifically with the cyclers, is pretty important because we are able to benefit from other sports that are at the top of their games. It's amazing to be able to sort of reach across and collaborate on human physiology or cycling specifics. It's a great opportunity and we're very lucky to have it. We're incredibly privileged as a group to have Ineos supporting us in this program and to have the opportunity to train with the Grenadiers and the knowledge to tap into. You couldn't pick a better company and better team to be involved with at this stage for us, certainly. What we're all looking forward to is winning the America's Cup and the opportunity that awaits us in 2024 in Barcelona and the potential that we could lift the America's Cup there. Mm -hmm.